All right, let's talk about the materials that you are going to need for this project. First, you need a pretty heavy duty sewing machine. I got this one, Singer 328K, after doing a bunch of research online um, for a hundred bucks off of Facebook Marketplace. And it came with this table, which is just awesome because it just helps keep it in place when I'm feeding through all the really heavy fabric. You can get one of the newer machines. Singer markets a line of heavy duty sewing machines that are pretty cheap. They're like around the $200 mark. Um, and they do pretty well. They were able to, I got a 44S and it was able to do just about everything this one was, but this one just had more like oomph to it. And it was only a hundred dollars. So half the price. And it's, it was made back in the day when they still use all cast iron parts. So it's gonna last you forever and it's a lot easier to work on too. But yeah, research the different models. Some were crap, some are better. Then you are going to need a walking foot. I struggled so much in the beginning of this project. And if I had just had a walking foot, I wouldn't have had to go through like the days of troubleshooting that I went through. A walking foot basically just helps move heavy fabric through the sewing machine. They're, they cost like 15 to 20 bucks online. The type of walking foot you need, like low shank or high shank, depends on the type of sewing machine you have. So look that up before you buy one. Then you're going to need some heavy duty needles. I use both 18 and 16. 16 should work just fine. 18 is a little bit thicker and can go through thicker fabrics, but it punches bigger holes. So yeah, get a pack of those because you're, you'll likely break and bend a few needles. Um, then you are going to need heavy duty bonded nylon thread. I will link to all of the stuff that I use below this video. Um, the type of thread that you use is really important because your yurt is going to be out in the weather and there's going to be a lot of stress on this thread. It needs to have some tensile strength and you'll also need some clips. I really recommend clips instead of pins because you'll never poke yourself and they're just so much easier to use. You need some good heavy duty fabric scissors. You need a straight edge to measure and cut your fabric, which I will explain later in the video. I used a level and a chalk line is really helpful for making your um, triangles. And then of course you need the fabric itself. I used 12 ounce army duck fabric. It's called, it's marketed for like boat covers and also tents and other shelters, tarps. Um, you can use eight, 10 ounce fabric, but I recommend going a little bit thicker because I mean, you're going to be living in this thing. I ordered from a site called canvasetc.com, which I will link to below. And I highly recommend getting the 60 inch wide rather than 36 inch wide fabric, because it just means you'll have to do way less cutting and sewing. Um, because the walls are around like 51 inches tall. Um, and you can choose to get a fire repellent impregnated in the fabric, but I choose to, to go without that one because I think it's carcinogenic and bad for your health to breathe in those volatile organic compounds. Um, so this is just cotton canvas impregnated with Sunforger. Um, which is like a natural, non-toxic, whatever that means, um, coating that is UV resistant and mildew resistant. I reached out to the company to see like what exactly it was because I didn't want it to be PFAS based. They confirmed that there's no PFAS in it. I think it's like a natural silicon based treatment. So it's the best you're gonna get. I mean, commercial yurts are like vinyl um, and those are pretty nasty off gassers. So cotton canvas, it may not last as long as the like commercial yurts, but it's gonna be a lot healthier to live in and breathe the air inside of. Lastly, you are going to need, it depends on what you, what you want to do, but I am going to use a dome to, for a skylight to put on top, um, to let some light in and they make those out of either you can choose PVC or polycarbonate 
polycarbonate is a better plastic because it doesn't off gas and it lasts longer. I can link below to the website that I use. Some people choose to put in vinyl windows um, and you would sew that into the wall canvas. It's pretty straightforward and easy, but I chose to opt out of the vinyl windows. We'll see how it is living inside. I might choose to tear down the canvas and sew in some vinyl windows, but vinyl's a pretty bad off-gasser and it stinks. So I chose to opt out of that and hopefully we'll just be spending most of our time outside and we'll get what light we need from candles and the skylight and little fairy lights, it'll, it'll be very romantic and nice, hopefully. Um, and then you can also frame in windows, if glass windows that open, if you're feeling ambitious and you have some carpentry skills. I don't, but I'm hoping my partner can do that part for me. You'll need a grommet kit for um, putting grommets into the canvas in order to strap it onto the yurt structure. And yeah, I, I think that's it. My tape measure is only 25 feet long and the piece I'm cutting now is the wall canvas which needs to be 54 feet long so I'm going to make some marks and go from there. I'm working at 22 feet. So I just got 51 and a half feet into what was supposed to be a 54 foot long segment and I found out something that I didn't know before that they um, apparently sew the segments together to get a contiguous length that fits longer than a certain amount and I didn't read the fine print. So how do you cut a straight edge when the cut edge from the factory isn't straight? You can use um, a measuring tape, which is 60 inches at least, and you can clip the tape or otherwise secure it to one edge of the fabric. And this fabric is 60 inches wide, so if I make a mark, at 30 when the tape itself is straight. Make a little dot halfway through and then measure from that dot to each of the sides and then make a mark at the same measurement on either side and then line up those marks with a straight edge and then you have your straight line. So next we have our roof segments. They're going to be 125 inches long, and then we're going to cut those in half for a total of 19. So we need to cut 10 125 inch long roof segments out of this canvas. So next, we need to cut diagonally across the roof panels. And the best way to do this is to use a chalk line. It's really useful if you have two people. And that's the easiest way to draw a really long straight diagonal line across the 125 inch long roof panels. I have 10 to cut, and then we'll work on sewing them together. Next, we sew long sides to long sides and short sides to short sides. This is probably the most important point that I will give you of all, and that is to not worry about sewing front side to front side or back side to back side because there's no real front or back to this fabric. If you do that, you will end up sewing essentially a long rectangle instead of a pie conical shape. Um, 
and it's kind of hard to explain verbally, so I really encourage you to kind of play with some pieces of paper, cutting out using you know a scaled um, version of this pattern, and just putting them together in different ways and seeing what the result is. That's ultimately how I corrected my mistake of sewing eight of these triangle pieces together into a giant rectangle before I realized that this isn't a cone. It was very frustrating. So I wanna save you that frustration. And to do that, I really encourage you to cut out some pieces of paper, just put together the, the triangles and you'll see. Even if you sew long side to long side and sew short side to short side, if you put the wrong sides together, they'll end up making a rectangle, right? Like the short pointy tip to the wide base of the triangle. If you sew it that way, you're gonna get a rectangle. And maybe you're like, Psh, of course, obviously, how did you get that wrong? But maybe there are a few of you that didn't quite get the geometry like myself and I wanna save you that trouble. So you're gonna be matching, you know, the, the pointy narrow end to the pointy narrow end on the other piece of the fabric. And yeah, long side to long side and short side to short side. Another specification is you want to sew from the piece that you're working on. You don't want to sew all long sides together and all short sides together and then join those. I, I did that too. I was thinking like, oh, I could save myself some time and kind of just streamline it. But if you do that, then you'll end up having to push through a lot of fabric through your sewing machine. Because, you know, if you're just adding one piece to the long row of fabric that you have, then you're only ever pushing one piece of fabric through the right side of the machine. And most machines are shaped like that. You know, they have the needle, they have the needle and they have the machine. And there's like this kind of tunnel that you have to push the right side of the fabric through. Um, so yeah, follow the directions precisely. When I am pinning, I make sure that this edge is aligned perfectly. And then the top edge, um, I don't care so much about the part that is the very center of the yurt. Um, and that's because I'm gonna be cutting out a circle and putting in a plexiglass dome to um, let in light. So yeah, you, you, your pieces of fabric don't always line up perfectly. So I just have prioritized the bottom edge lining that up perfectly and when i'm pinning i between every pin i pull at the pin and where i'm going to put the new pin just to make sure it's not the the fabric isn't getting misaligned anywhere make sure you're doing really good pinning too because if you have any misalignment, then you're gonna get bunching and then the seam won't be as strong. Alrighty, so here I am at the end of my fabric and I've pinned it together perfectly. And look, there's still about like an inch of mismatch. The, and sometimes there's more. Sometimes there's like a couple inches of mismatch and I just don't worry about it. The, Pattern that I used didn't specify, um, so I'm just not gonna worry about it. And if worse comes to worse, and you don't want to sew a circle in the top to fit a plexiglass dome, you can just add a cover, a dome cover to the top. And that would just be like a small little extra piece of canvas. And it would just, you could just sew a circle of it around this part to make sure that there are no um, holes that fabric that rain can get into at the end.
All right, do you see now why you are going to want a large space like a gymnasium to sew this yurt? It is not going to be easy in a small space. You could probably do it, but you're, you're going to have a difficult time. So if you can manage to find a big space to stretch your yurt out and pull it all around and have space to sew without the fabric knocking stuff over, you will have a much easier time. Okay, so now that you have sewn your two pieces of fabric together, you are going to open it up and you are going to cut off either the right or the left side, but be consistent which side you cut off so you have all the seams running in the, the same direction. It's just visually pleasing. I can't figure out any reason why you would have to structurally um, cut off the same side every single time. It doesn't make sense to me other than the visual aspect of it. But either way, you cut off one side in half um, so that you can fold over the long side over the short side and then sew that together. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so here we go. Here's the seam. I am going to check which side I have folded over by looking underneath the fabric, my other lines that I've stitched. And I have folded it over this way as you can see. So I'm gonna cut off half of this piece. Just be careful that you're not cutting this, the underside piece when you're cutting on top. Usually you can get a little cut started and then just cruise along like this. I sometimes cut off a little bit more than half because it's easier to then fold this over. So after you have cut half of the seam, um, you are going to fold the longer half over the shorter half and sew like as close as you can to that folded edge. Basically it ends up being around like an eighth or 16th of an inch. Um, being careful not to sew too close to the original um, line of stitches because then the edge that you fold under um, won't get sewn and it could potentially come up. The, the point of this is to keep it waterproof and keep everything sealed. If you don't pull it apart, like this, if you don't pull it apart so there's tension on the seam and then sew like this, then you could end up doing something like this. You see, see how much you'd be sewing right, you'd be sewing right here. See how much fabric that is? Look, it's a lot of fabric. You're not supposed to have that much fabric in the seam allowance. So you've got to pull it apart. You've got to pull it apart so you basically you know, if you iron, this is what you iron. You pull it apart and you iron here. So you don't have any extra fabric tucked under there. So you're folding under and you're pulling apart and you're pinning this with your fingers. This waterproof seam is by far the most time consuming seam of all on this project. Um, so get yourself a good podcast or some music and just plow ahead. Um, if I had to estimate how long the sewing on this project would take, I would say probably somewhere between like two to four days, depending on your skill level. I've been doing it in chunks here and there, but depending on your space, you may not be able to do that. Um, so I think that with my sewing level, which is like intermediate maybe, one of these seams, sewing it together, the first line of stitches and then sewing together, then cutting, cutting off the short side and then folding it under and doing the waterproof seam, all of that one seam takes me like about an hour and there are 19 pieces of fabric. So you do the math on how many seams, <laughs> seams there are there. Um, and, and that's kind of like a rough estimate on how long it will take you. Okay. 
So I've gotten to the last step and I am realizing that I'm supposed to be sewing a long side to a short side. They don't line up, do you see? Um, I don't really know what to do, but I'm going to make the executive decision to sew together the top part evenly and let there be some overhang that I then maybe trim off. So I am going to be pinning these sides together. I have the double lines of stitches on top right now and I will be sewing like this um, and yeah, let's see how it goes. Okay, so here comes the last step. I need to do the waterproof seam on the last seam, um, but you know, it's then sewn all together, which means that unlike all the rest of the seams, we are going to have to push a whole lot of fabric through this part of the machine. Not really sure how I'm gonna do it, but I am just gonna push ahead and find a way. I've managed to get this rolled up, pushed through. I think I'm just gonna stand up while I'm sewing and just go real slow and push it along and stop and push it along and stop and we'll see how it goes. All right, with some help, I got that last seam finished. And now I am working on hemming. Um, you can iron it, but again, it's just a waste of time in my opinion. So I'm using clips and I am folding it under about a half an inch and then folding it again so that there will be no exposed edges and I am just sewing along again, like about an eighth of an inch from the edge, just as close to this as I can get. Otherwise it's more likely to pull out. So just so kind of like right around in the middle of the, the fold and yeah, just chug along. This portion of the hem where the other seam meets the hem is pretty difficult for my sewing machine to punch through. But if I go slow and use the hand wheel, usually it can, it can manage it. But if you're not able to sew through this, I think as long as you hem either side, it should be fine. Um, you might be able to come back through with a hand needle and sew up the, the places where the seams meet the hem. But yeah, it's kind of a sticky situation here. Here I am just holding down the fabric with the point of these scissors because sometimes, oh yep, there it's doing it. When the foot, when the fabric's too thick for the foot to hold down, my sewing machine has a problem with the thread getting, getting kind of unwound and then making a knot behind the needle. So if I can like press down the fabric manually with a pair of scissors, then it usually moves along um, a lot better, but now I'm gonna have to take the 
fabric out and cut this thread because it's gotten unwound and it's going to make a knot. You see how it's Today is a great rainy day to finish this yurt project once and for all. I recommend saving the wall canvas for last because if you start with the wall canvas, you'll just be chugging along thinking, this is so easy, I got this. And then you'll start on the roof canvas and you'll be like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? So yeah, save the easiest for last. And if you buy canvas that's 60 inches wide, you won't have to do as much cutting um, because you, the, the, the design that I'm following has 51 inch tall walls. So it provides about an extra like six inches or so after hemming to mate with the yurt platform. And yeah, then you just have to hem the four sides and it's the same deal as the roof canvas. You just fold it over about a half inch or so and then fold it over again so there are no exposed edges. And then you just sew about an eighth inch from this side. The closer you get to the side, the, the crisper it'll be and the, the flatter it will lay. And then you put grommets in, about four or five on the short sides. And on one of the long sides, you put the, the amount of rafters an equal amount of grommets um, to the amount of rafters. And then you're done. One more quick hot tip. If you have some tables to set up behind and in front of the sewing machine, it's gonna make your life that much easier because the wall canvas is really long. You're gonna have to have the wall canvas on the floor, at least some of it, unless you roll it up. But having the fabric on some surfaces that are level with the sewing machine makes it that much easier for you to feed it through the machine without it pulling um, either front or back. And it'll help you create more even stitches as well. Okay, so we need to put a grommet in each corner so that we can lash it down when the canvas is on the frame. And I will link below the grommet kit that I use, but it comes with this little hole punch that's not really that strong. So I chose to, to do it on like close to the seam on, doesn't matter which side, um, because I just don't think it could punch through this seam. So, but before I do that, I just wanna measure real quick with the grommet to make sure that where I punch the hole um, doesn't seat the grommet so that it's like overlapping one of these seams because then uh, otherwise it wouldn't sit flat. So here I go. I got it, maybe and then some. <laughs> All right, so then you take this little piece, you put it on the underside. You seat one of these dilly bobs on that little seat. And then you take one of the washers and put it on top. And then you take this dilly bob, all very technical terms, and hammer it in. And there you have a grommet. No cheese though. <laughs> if you're young, you're not gonna get that reference.
Okay, so you might decide that you want to sew some reinforcements on which to put your grommets, and that might be a really good idea. I'm halfway through this thinking, oh, I really hope that the, the canvas doesn't rip away from the um, grommet over time, putting too much stress on the canvas. Um, so I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll put two grommets on either side of the seam and that'll help distribute the stress a little bit more. Um, and you know, probably the canvas will mold before it rips out, but we'll see. So there you have it. That's how you sew a yurt canvas cover. And as soon as I get started on building the yurt structure, I will post a video on how to do that. And I'll show you the finished product as soon as it's all set up. Good luck with your sewing and definitely let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them and to help out as much as I can. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and happy sewing.